Good afternoon. On this video, I want to address a, a video that Nika II uh, just uh, put out. Um, 1 John 5, 4 through 13 explained. Three that bear record in heaven. Now, uh, what he's trying to do is uh, say that the uh, Trinity, Trinity is a false doctrine. And uh, that there are actually three persons uh, who are one God. Uh, one God. <coughs> Excuse me. And what, the, what these guys do is uh, they'll jump from scripture to scripture and uh, ignore the uh, hermeneutical principle that clear scripture interprets more difficult scripture. And you look at John 1.1, 1, 1, interesting, he just ignores what the, the actual scripture says. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. With God, and the word was God. That's two persons. I have a video that talks about the uh, oneness people can't count. And uh, this clearly is a, a fact here that uh, when someone the word was with God, that means that uh, uh, he's uh, alongside God, and then he also is God. So he is God, and he's also another person, which means he's with God. Uh, so what they want to do is they, they just ignore that, and he reads uh, um, as being one. But the word was with God means that he's with them, and he's also God. So it's two persons right there. And uh, then you look at uh, Matthew, uh, no, excuse me, John 14, 23, 14, 23, um, it says here, Jesus answered and said to him, if a man loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we, we will come unto him and make our bowl uh, with him. That's two persons. And of course, then the Holy Spirit, so for the Holy Spirit, Will come in also, but the comfort which is the Holy Ghost is a third person, uh, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance, and whatsoever I have, I have said unto you. So there's three persons right there: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost come to reside in a believer, which, by the way, is a church age phenomenon, not a uh, not part of the Old Testament. And uh, so let's go to First John uh, five seven, and. Um, Look at that really quickly. The uh, and where where he's messing up on this thing here. Um, First John five six. Um, this is the case that this is he that came by water and blood. Now he wants to say water is the spirit, and uh, some people do interpret it that way. But the water I see in the context. First John five is the is the actual physical birth, and the blood the blood is actually representing this deity uh, in uh, Acts twenty. This is God's blood, and uh, so it shows that uh, he's both uh, a God-man, and he had a normal birth. Uh, let's see, Acts 20, and that verse shows Acts 20, let's see, oh yeah, uh, 2028. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto the flock, of which the Holy Ghost hath made you see is to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. And uh, so that's God's blood. When people tell you that Christ had same same type of blood as we have, uh, they ignore that verse. And that's why the blood is so important. It, it, is, it, is a, uh, it was God's blood. And uh, so it wasn't just mere human blood that would, uh, that redeemed us. But anyway, so they, uh, I look at the water as there, and I know other people interpret it, interpret the spirit, because sometimes water does reflect the Holy Spirit. But the water we're following in the context here, because uh, Nicodemus is saying, uh, Nicodemus says in uh, John 3, uh, can a man be uh, born again and uh, go back into his mother's womb? And that's what this is. Uh, John 3 is the really companion verse on that. Um, John 3, um, let's see here. First, 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Let me go back here. Um, verse 3, uh, Jesus said, uh, answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? So that's what that was referring to in that context. And uh, I think you know, 1 John 5, 7 is referring exactly to the same context. Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of blood. So there, water here is the physical birth and then of the spirit. And of course, we have uh, 
uh, the uh, uh, issue of their blood there, and that's that's how we know it's the virgin birth that the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ received God's blood, uh, and that's uh, He is God, God in the flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. So that's two births there. And so uh, first five seven. Uh, the water there is the physical birth. The blood is representing the uh, deity of Jesus Christ, that he is God in the flesh. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, is physical birth, uh, normal human birth, but by water and blood. And is a spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. And there, so the Holy Spirit uh, tells us these things are true. And there, verse 7, there are three, three that bear record in heaven. Three is not one. Three is not the same. There's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is not the Word. The Holy Ghost is not the is not the Father. The Holy the Word is not the uh, is not the Father is not the Word. The Word is not the Father. Um, they are different persons, and these three are one. Now, Nick Nick of the Second, all these guys, these one, these guys, they want to say they're the same. One is not the same. If he want, if the Holy Spirit wanted to say they are the same, he would have said the same. They are one. There's a unity in the Godhead. So there's one God. One Godhead, but there are three distinct persons in it who speak to each other, know each other, love each other, and have always loved each other. In fact, it's one of the proofs of the Trinity that God is love. And if you have a love, you have to have an agent object. Uh, someone um, loving has to have an object to love. And so, uh, and since God didn't create out of a need, he created out of a, uh, a desire to share his love. One of the proofs is of, of, the, of the Trinity uh, before man, mankind was created, or angels were created. The Holy the Trinity always existed together and always had a love relationship among one another. And so since God is love, there always has to be a, a giver of love and a receiver of love. Um, and then, of course, there are three that bear witness in, in the earth, the spirit, uh, and uh, the, the water, and, and the blood. And these three agree uh, in one. And uh, the capital is uh, capital S here, uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, referring to the Holy Spirit there. So uh, the fact is, is that the uh, uh, the Trinity, the triune nature of God, the Godhead, uh, is a, uh, a fact. And you can look at other scriptures that talk about this one God and He's the Father. That's just emphasizing a, a particular aspect of the the, uh, the that triune nature. And uh, um, so you have to see you know, clear scripture interprets more difficult scripture. So uh, you get around the first John, uh, John 1, 1 to say the word was with God and the word was God and say, say that therefore that, that means that the word was the father and uh, he, um, the father was the word is, is ludicrous. Yeah, it's two persons that speaking there. It was with the father, was with God, the word was with God. And the word was God. That means uh, when you're with someone, that means there's two persons there. And he's talking about Jesus Christ uh, as being uh, God in the flesh, God incarnate. The Son is not the Father. The Father is not the Son. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not the Son or the Father. They're distinct persons. You can't read it any other way. You cannot read it any other way. And so what they see one, they see the same. It's not the same. When Jesus Christ says, oh, my Father are one, he can say we're the same. He says we're one. They're unified. They have one essence. One essence. It's only one God essence. And um, uh, but they talk to each other. They know each other. They uh, they love one another, and they have a relationship with one another. The three members of the Godhead. That's a fact. That's what the scriptures reveal. You can't get away from it. And uh, in Matthew three sixteen, you have the baptism of the uh, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The heavens open up. The Father speaks to the Son. It's not the son speaking to himself. He's not throwing it. He's not being cruel, just throwing a voice out from heaven. He, uh, so uh, you have the father. The Holy Spirit shows up as a dove. And the son is obviously there in Jesus Christ. There's three persons that show up in one in one scene. And um, uh, it's not one. That's not the father showing up and, uh, uh, you know, as a dove and then as the son of God. That's three distinct persons that show up in that uh, in the uh, that verse there. 316, 317, the Father speaks from heaven, and uh, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit show, appears as a dove. Can't deny it, there's three persons there. Now, uh, how this operates is a mystery to us. We don't understand how it operates, but it does operate. And the fact that they can't see that the Father did not go to the cross, 
the Father judged the sins of, of mankind on the Son. The Father was not on the cross. The Son was on the cross and we uh, bearing the sins of the world. And the Holy Spirit glorifies uh, the work of the, of the uh, Son. So, again, this is uh, oneness people just cannot read Scripture. And uh, they, uh, they've got to misread Scripture in order to uh, get around the idea that uh, what the uh, Trinitarians uh, uh, correctly state that uh, the um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are three distinct persons who have the same essence. They are all they all three are God, and um, they're unified as God. So uh, those passages are very clear. There's nothing confusing about them. And once you look at that and get them established, then you move on to other passages and uh, deal with them according in context. Amen. Thank you.